Okay guys, let's talk about on-farm diesel and getting our fuel tank set up. All right, so a couple of reasons we wanted a fuel tank, and uh, there, there, there's obvious reasons if you're using running an off-road diesel, which we'll get into that in just a second. Um, we run on-road diesel here, and the reason we do on-road is because it's just simpler. It allows us to have one tank. There's no confusion. I'm not accidentally putting red dye diesel in my truck or anything like that, so we run all on-farm diesel here. The other reason we do that is we're not really going through enough off-road diesel because we, we use a small tractor. We have a small farm, and it doesn't make sense. If we had a bigger farm, bigger tractors, and bigger machinery to run, it would be a different discussion, but because of the size of us, um, and I think most farms underneath 100 to acres there's not really a ton of need to do that uh, but uh, again you just have to kind of add that up and see what the savings is usually it's about 50 cents a gallon um, and so you just you do the math out and see what the savings is see how long it'll take to pay for yourself and make your decision there we run it for a couple reasons one because running a farm where you're not receiving a monthly paycheck uh, we want all of our bills to be annualized, right? So this allows us, this tank lasts us about a year. We fill it up twice a year, three times a year, something along those lines. Um, and that gives us the ability to kind of annualize our, our fuel consumption for the vehicles. Right now we have two vehicles. We have a gas truck and a, and a, uh, a, a, a gasoline, I'm sorry, a diesel truck and a gasoline um, uh, SUV. Uh, what we're transitioning to is we're actually going to end up going to having two diesel trucks. Uh, we've just found that running a farm is better to have extra towing vehicles and that sort of thing. Being able to put a gooseneck behind two, two vehicles is really nice. So we're going to end up eventually having two diesel trucks here, probably in the next two or three years. But uh, anyway, so that again allows us to kind of keep everything annualized to on, on our fuel consumption. The other reason we do it is it allows us to kind of dollar cost average over the year. We can buy fuel in the spring and in the fall when fuel is cheapest. We can save those high spikes. We don't have issues when there's bad weather events that come through that shut down pumps, things like that. Uh, we always have fuel and so it creates a lot of advantages there. <clears throat> A couple of things that you have to worry about with, with this is, uh, the first thing is not mixing up f fuels. So uh, obviously diesel, gasoline, and off-road diesel are the three big ones. So gasoline being that, obviously if you run that in a diesel engine or something like that, you're gonna destroy your engine because your ignition timing is gonna be off. Uh, gasoline is gonna detonate in there, bend rods and crap like that. And, uh, and so that's a, that's a big issue. Um, so you don't want any gasoline mixed with your diesel. The other thing that people will do is you'll mix off-road diesel and regular diesel. Now, it used to be that off-road diesel had a higher sulfur count and so it had a little more lubricity for the engine. Um, and so that is not really true anymore from my understanding of it. Uh, the, the current diesel, and, or um, on-road and off-road diesel, uh, they're essentially the same product. They just add the red dye to it and there's no tax, or it's significantly less taxes, let me put it that way. I doubt there's anything sold that doesn't have many taxes on it, but uh, that's a different discussion. The red dye diesel is very illegal to run in your on-road vehicles. It has a pretty hefty fine, not worth it, guys. Uh, you could run a lifetime on one of those fines uh, for, for paying the taxes. It's just not worth that 50 cents a gallon savings to try to risk it by. They do check periodically, especially if you go through livestock checkpoints. I know when I go down to Florida to pick up cattle, we have to go through a livestock checkpoint, and they do check periodically there. So uh, we just want none of that. Now, one of the issues you run into buying old tanks is that if this had red dye diesel in it, you might have some of those particulates left over and that getting in your vehicle and that is somewhat unknown what the causes are they have cleaners that you can run through for it um, we what we did with this one is we didn't know what was running it we just cleaned the tank really well uh, made sure everything was drained out of it we ran diesel or had it filled up with diesel and then we ran some extra filters on there uh, to make sure we could pick up everything that, that we needed out of the tank um, I haven't seen any red dye in it so I, right now what we're doing is we're making sure that we have all of our records so we're keeping all of our receipts from having this filled we have our receipt from when we when we bought the, the, the tank um, so that we can kind of prove to the to whatever you know agricultural officer or whatever that hey we're not running red dye diesel or anything if you find any particulars from it here's why there may have been a little bit left in the tank but um, my truck has never had it had any red dye diesel run through it um, and neither actually my tractor hasn't hardly had any run through it so um, it, it's it's not something that I'm particularly worried about but I want to be able to err on the side of caution and just make sure that I'm not ending up with a ten thousand dollar fine so Inside this tank, we're going to deal with condensation issues, especially as it heats up, and, and uh, especially here in the south where we've got real humid air. We're going, to, we're going to deal with condensation issues inside that tank, and that's going to put water in with the diesel, which is going to cause that algae growth. So the first thing that we did with the tank is we're going to add a biocide in here to actually take care of that. 
kill all the algae and, 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 and hopefully that won't be a problem for us. We'll keep a regular amount of biocide in there. Every time we have it filled up, we'll just add the amount that we need for the gallons that are in there. <clears throat> the other thing that we want to add to this is we, we went ahead and added a non-gelling formula. Uh, that way, because this is going to be stored throughout the winter, even though we're in Alabama and it's not terribly cold here, uh, we wanted to make sure that, that we had no gelling issues here in the winter time and that our, our diesel stays very liquid. The thing that we wanted to do with it was just kind of take it out of the equation and, uh, and not have to worry about gelling. And so we, we do all of our diesel additives as soon as we fill the tank up. And, and, and those are the two big ones, a biocide and a non-gelling formula. Both those have other additives in them. So they have cleaning additives, they have injector cleaners, they have, they have lubricants in there. Um, and so all that kind of helps out over the course of it. But really those are the two things that we're focusing on is making sure that we're killing the algae that, that can grow in there and, and making sure that we add that non gelling formula for the winter time. Now getting your diesel tank set up, you have a couple options for cleaning this out. For us, we actually ended up, uh, we, we set the diesel tank slightly at an angle. It, uh, it slopes down, I don't know, maybe a, a, an inch from one direction to the other uh, down here towards the pump. There's a drain, uh, there, there's a drain cock here at the bottom and that drain cock actually allows us to open it up. We can get all the crap out of the tank and that's what we did and we found that that got most of it out. There's a little bit of algae down there at the bottom um, and we actually ended up just leaving that in place and the reason we left that in place is because one, again, we're going to add the biocide to kill it and then two we've got some filters in line that should, should take care of that so um, the other reason that I wasn't that worried about is because again I do run a 20 year old truck we run a 20 year old tractor we don't have the tight injectors that you're dealing with now in modern diesels if we were running a modern diesel we've been a little bit more anal about getting that clean I probably would run another filter on the end um, and we may put another filter here on the end of this anyways but uh, we'll go into the filter here set up here in just a second so the other thing that we want to make sure we're, that we're setting up with this, uh, with, with our tank set up is that we have on our filler cap that we have an appropriate filler cap on there. The filler cap that actually came with this tank that the guy was using that we bought it from, he was using a, uh, a, a bung from a 55 gallon drum and that does not allow, you, does not allow the, the, the fluid to breathe in there and so you can have issues with, uh, with building up really high amounts of pressure inside this tank. And so we wanted to swap that out and actually put an actually approved diesel cap on here. Um, it was really easy to install it, not a big deal. Um, you th uh, thread the pipe down in there, put you know with your wrench on there and get it snug. And then now we've got a cap on there. The cap was 20 bucks. So very easy thing to fix to make sure that we have an approved um, uh, an approved filler cap on there. It's allowing our tank to vent and breathe as it needs to. So we're not dealing with any catastrophic issues. We're not dealing with leaks. We're not dealing with with. Uh, put too much pressure here on the pump and pump failure and of course obviously the rare one but the explosion uh, we don't want to deal with that which I'm not entirely convinced will happen with a diesel tank but uh, you know I'm still not willing to bet my life on it. <clears throat> the last thing that we want to do to set this up and get this all safe is to for one you may have to have some type of secondary containment system for your area check that out with your local usually local regulations is what govern these tanks I hear they're pretty lax on it but uh, the local regulations may tell you you have to have a secondary containment system but the other thing that we want to do and even though it's not actually required here is we want to add a grounding rod um, and we want to make sure that's grounded when you pump to your vehicle you create a lot of static in there and that static especially with the gasoline uh, could could discharge that gasoline now when it comes to the uh, to the diesel it's not really a huge issue because you can't really light diesel with a match but again it's an issue that we're just not going to risk government tells us that it's a good idea to do and uh, so we're just going to go ahead and do it and take it out of the equation it's 30 dollars for a ground rod it's not a big deal okay let's talk about our pump setup here as of right now we have not fully connected this you can see we just have the ends uh, sliced and uh, what we've got on order are some alligator clips. Eventually what we'll have is we'll have a full cover over this that'll have a solar panel and a trickle charger on it and we'll have this connected to a battery and that'll allow us to um, to actually have this just as an on, on, on off switch. For right now and for probably about the next year what we'll be doing is we just use these alligator clips, we tie them into the truck battery and then it allows us to pump. Now we don't do a ton of driving, we homeschool our kids, we live out in the middle of nowhere so uh, we're able to, we only fill up our truck once a month so it's not that uh, not that big of an issue to do that but obviously if you're filling more than that that's not a great option so you gotta come with a little bit something something a little bit more permanent like I said our final option is we will be building a, a small little kind of pole barn structure around this mount our solar panels and we'll have a battery here for it and uh, and that'll allow us to, uh, to to pump our fuel kind of on our on our knees so okay the pump we got is a GPI pump I'm pretty sure these pumps are actually made in America but somebody can correct me on that um, this one obviously is a 12 volt pump. We went with a 12 volt so that we can run it off the vehicles and that we don't have to have an a, uh, inverter if we're running it on solar. Um, it's a, a, a 11 amp uh, 
a 11 amp 12 volt circuit on here so uh, nothing super big nothing nothing super complicated um, <clears throat> it uh, if I remember right and I'm, I'm sure I'm blanking I think this was 12 gallons a minute it runs for 15 minutes uh, as the duty cycle and that needs 30 minutes of rest time or you'll burn the pump up um, it's a fairly simple operation you plug the power in when you pull this out there's an on off switch and then uh, we, uh, we we or when we pull our, our <coughs> Get our gas nozzle out. Pull our gas nozzle out. There's an on-off switch, and then we just hit our lever just like we would if we were at the gas pump. Now this is the gas valve that came with it. This one does not, I believe, have an auto stop when it gets full. So we are going to be changing this out and adding a different gas uh, valve to it. Uh, but uh, we, we really, I'd like one that's green so that it's kind of universal. Everybody knows this is a diesel tank over here. Uh, but uh, but also we want it to make sure it stops when we're filling up the truck. Okay, so the first filter that we have on here is we have our fuel water separator. Obviously, this does filtering as well. And I, if I remember right, I think this one was it does 15 microns, and then it has the fuel uh, absorption. Uh, uh, the water absorption in the filter and then it obviously our, is our fuel water separator so the water sinks to the bottom and we can drain it out if we need to. Um, <clears throat> this one we had to put on a slight angle because of the tank um, and I didn't want to go buy another extension for here um, but uh, you can see it, it, it runs through it just fine not really a big issue. Next one over, this is our two micron filter. So I always want my last one to be a two micron filter. Um, my fuel filter on my truck should catch anything else. I change my fuel filter at every oil change, so we're, we're, we stay pretty regular about that. We're actually adding another inline filter on the truck here with the, with the new fuel uh, lift pump that we've got going in, uh, but that's a, that's a separate video. As far as whether we're going to connect the third one, we may add a 10 micron and then a two micron one here. Um, it, it just kind of depends. Right now, I sincerely doubt that we have any type of problems with it, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of pat, um, hit, 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 I guess, cross that bridge when, when it becomes more of an issue for us. Um, as of right now, we've got, this is our setup and this is what we're sticking with. The, um, the connections, you can see they're all just uh, screw-on connections are fairly easy to put in. Uh, we have a, uh, we bought a product that specifically, it's just a pipe dope specifically for this type of process, so it handles any type of lubricants, oils, or whatever, and it won't dissolve in them. Uh, but we did go ahead, uh, each each joint on here did get uh, a liberal amount of pipe dope on it. So, uh, guys, that's a really inexpensive thing to do. One of the issues that you see people do is they screw these together and they don't put the pipe dope on there. Um, or they put the wrong type of pipe dope and it dissolves with the fuel, fuel, fluids, uh, specifically when it's a gasoline uh, tank. And what that'll do is that'll actually create air pockets in here and it'll give you poor suction. You'll reduce your flow. I mean, obviously you get leaks from it, but uh, more than that, you're just going to get air in, in, this, in, in these lines anywhere and you're going to, uh, to reduce your flow out depending on how bad that air is. You can reduce your flow pretty substantially. Okay, all in all, guys, we're pretty happy with this setup. It was a very simple process to get this all in place. A little bit pricey, but again, uh, with, the, with the savings throughout the year, it should cover the cost of the tank and the pump and everything. We figure in about five years, uh, we will actually kind of break even on the price of it. And then we just have the fuel here on the farm. Uh, if we end up moving the farm, this is just on skids, this will end up moving with us. Not a big deal to take it and, uh, and, and pop it on a flatbed trailer and it can, can just go with us. Very, very light. You can actually move it by hand if it's empty. Obviously, if it's full, it's a little bit more difficult. But we're not planning on moving this around. Like I said, this is going to be built under a shed. So uh, really happy with this setup, guys. If you have any questions, please post it in the comment box below. Uh, hopefully this video helps you get maybe your farm diesel set up. Like I said, we just do it with just on-road diesel. So if you want to do multiple tanks, it's basically the same setup again. Um, you can clean out your tanks. There's, there's different chemical products for that. If your tanks are really dirty, I would highly advise you to do that. Ours was just not dirty enough to justify it. So um, the diesel, the, the, the act of it going through the filters and everything, will kind of naturally clean it out over time, especially with good bio sites in there. So um, adding filters, changing filters regularly is a very, very wise and valuable thing to do. We're actually going to buy some extra filters and keep those on hand for us. So let us know if you all have any questions. Like I said, post it in the comments below. Uh, subscribe to our channel, guys. That really does help us out when you when, when all do that. Like the video. If you don't like the video, you find it boring, hit that like button twice. That helps us really get the point. And uh, other than that, guys, really appreciate it.